Today we're going to be talking about a dihybrid cross, and a dihybrid cross is a cross between two organisms that differ in only two characters. For example, when Gregor Mendel did his experiments, he did a cross between two pea plants, and the pea plants differed in pea color and pea shape. So let's go ahead and work through one of his experiments. So we'll start with the parent generation, so P for parent generation, and then I'm going to write phenotype. So the phenotypes Mendel used were he took a pea plant that had yellow round seeds and he crossed it with a pea plant that produced green wrinkled seeds. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write genotype. Now, yellow and green, that's a character, that's color. And yellow and green are traits of the character seed color. Round and wrinkled is a character for seed shape. And round and wrinkled are the traits for the character shape. So now we got to go ahead and we got to pick some letters. So I got to pick a letter for the character color. So my choices are Y or G. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go with the G because in upper and lower case G look a lot different from each other. So yellow is going to be dominant to green. I'm going to tell you that, but Mendel had to figure that out through experimentation. So I'm going to write capital G, capital G, and then over here, lowercase, lowercase. Now I got to do the same thing for the for the character shape. Do I use a cap, do I use an R or do I use a W? I'm going to choose an R because again, upper and lowercase R's look a lot different from each other. So capital R, capital R, because capital represents the dominant genes, the code for round, and lowercase r, lowercase r, because lowercase letters are used for recessive traits. Again, I put in my cross. Now gametes. What gametes are going to be produced here? And what I like to do here is use sort of a FOIL method. During meiosis, this capital G could pair up with this capital R. This capital G could pair up with that capital R. This G could pair up with that capital R, or this G could pair up with that capital R. Now, remember, your gametes are going to contain one of each type of gene. So, in this case, I want one G and one R for each gamete. So, let's go ahead and write those down. This is pretty easy here because all my gametes are going to be what? They're going to be capital G, capital R. Capital G, capital R, capital G, capital R. And you can see that each one of my gametes has one of each type of letter, a G and an R, G and an R, G and an R, G and an R. Now that's important because that's where a lot of people go wrong when they're doing pun and squares is that they incorrectly figure out what their gametes are. So it's just a little check here. Make sure that you have one of each type of letter. In this case, a G and an R, a G and an R. You don't want two G's and you don't want two R's because then you're missing the other letter. Let's do the same thing here. Again, if I apply this FOIL technique here, all my gametes are going to be lowercase g, lowercase r. Lowercase g, lowercase r, lowercase g, lowercase r, lowercase g, lowercase r. Now I'm going to go ahead and draw a Punnett square. This Punnett square is going to be a bit bigger because we're talking about two characters here as opposed to one. Now, that would work for a monohybrid cross, but this is a dihybrid cross, so I want to double everything. Cut it in half, cut it in half. Double everything. Cut it in half, cut it in half. 16 squares as opposed to 4. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put my gametes along this side. So capital G capital R, capital G, capital R, same thing, same thing. Put my gametes, these gametes, along the top. 
lowercase, 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 lowercase. Now I go ahead and figure out what are the different combinations of offspring that could be produced here. So if I've got a gamete with a capital G and a capital R and it gets fertilized by a gamete that has a lowercase g and a lowercase r, this is what the resultant genotype is going to be. Capital G, lowercase g, capital R, lowercase. In fact, all of the squares are going to have the same genotype. They're all going to be what we say, what we call double heterozygous. Double heterozygous. Now, these are going to be my F1 offspring, my first generation of offspring. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down, F1. And these are genotypes, so I'll start there with genotypes. Now this is pretty easy because 100% are going to be double heterozygous. Capital G, lowercase, capital R, lowercase. Now phenotype. What phenotype would this genotype produce? 100% are going to be yellow round. Because look at these two genes right here, capital G and lowercase. This capital G for yellow is going to be dominant over the lowercase g for green. So we're going to end up with yellow round seeds. 100% of however many offspring I produced are going to be yellow round. Now, if Mendel would have stopped there, he would never have really discovered how traits were inherited. But he took it a step further. He was a good scientist, he was a thorough scientist, and he took this a step further. And what he did was he took two of these offspring, doesn't matter what two you take, because they, they all have the same genotype, they all have the same phenotype. So he took two of these offspring and mated them together. And this is what really kind of propelled his research forward and made it significant. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to erase this for room's sake. And I'm going to leave this down here just so I don't forget what we're actually working with. I'm going to go ahead and erase this. And we're going to start with our F1s. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to write F1. And I like to do phenotype next. Again, my preference. Phenotype. And what Mendel did was he took a yellow round. And crossed that plant with a, another plant that also produced yellow round seeds. Now I'm going to write genotype. And again, the genotypes were double heterozygous. So capital G, lowercase, capital R, lowercase. Same thing here. Capital G, lowercase, capital R, lowercase. And then gametes. Now I'm going to go ahead and erase this because we've put that information up there. And again, we've got to figure out what gametes are going to be produced here. So again, being very careful, and this occurs during meiosis, this capital G, this gene, could pair up with that gene. This capital G could pair up with that lowercase r. This is all by pure chance. This lowercase g could pair up with that capital R. This lowercase g could pair up with that lowercase r. Now I go ahead and sort of summarize my results there. Capital G, capital R, capital G, lowercase r. Lowercase g, capital R, lowercase g, lowercase r. And again, a quick check here, because my gamete should have one of each type of gene. So one g and one r. G and r, g and r, g and r, g and r. If I got two g's or two r's, then my gametes are going to be deficient in something. So, just as a quick check there. Same thing's going to happen over here. 
In this case, it's the same thing, but if you're working a different problem, this genotype might be different from that one. In this case, it's the same. So capital G, capital R, capital G, lowercase, lowercase, capital, lowercase, lowercase. Now I'm going to go ahead and draw a Punnett square. Again, neat work is paramount here. There's my Punnett square, and I'm going to write my gametes, these gametes down this side, these gametes across the top, so capital G, capital R, capital G, lowercase, lowercase, capital, lowercase, lowercase. Same thing across the top, capital G, capital R, capital G, lowercase, lowercase, capital, lowercase, lowercase. What if a gamete containing a capital G and a capital R fertilizes a gamete containing a capital G and a capital R? What's the resultant genotype of the offspring? Capital G, capital G, capital R, capital R. And I keep doing this. What about this gamete and this gamete? Capital G, capital G, capital R, lowercase r. And I keep working my way across. A little tedious, but good information. Next one, what if this gamete paired up with that gamete, capital G, capital G, capital R, lowercase, and I keep working it across. Same thing here. Again, by convention, my capital letter goes first, capital G, lowercase g, capital R, capital R. Keep the same order of your letters, G's before R's. And then down here, there we go. These are my F2 offspring. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write that down. F2. And I'm going to start with genotypes. And I've got to summarize all these genotypes. And this is where organization is super important here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start in the upper left-hand corner. And I'm going to work my way down to the lower right-hand corner. And as I do this, I'm going to cross things off so I don't uh, reuse them again by accident. So I'm going to start here. How many of these genotypes are there. Turns out that this genotype occurs once out of all 16. So 1 out of 16 is going to be capital G, capital G, capital R, capital R, comma, comma. What about this genotype here? Or I could go to that one there, it doesn't matter. I got two of these genotypes. So 2 out of the 16 are going to be capital G, capital G, capital R, lowercase, comma, comma. 1 16th is going to be that. Capital G, capital G, lowercase, lowercase. Maybe I'll do this one next. 1 2 16ths are going to have that genotype. So capital G, lowercase, capital R, capital R. And I'll do this one next. So double heterozygous. 1, 2, 3, 4. So 4 sixteenths, capital G, lowercase, capital R, lowercase, comma, comma. And maybe I'll do this one, 1, 2 of that genotype. So 2 sixteenths are going to be capital G, lowercase, lowercase, lowercase. Do this guy next. 1 sixteenth is going to be lowercase g, lowercase g, uppercase, uppercase. 2 sixteenths would be lowercase, lowercase, uppercase, lowercase, and finally double homozygous recessive, 1 sixteenth, lowercase, 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 lowercase. So those are all my genotypes. 
all the different possible genotypes and the frequency at which they would occur. Now let's go ahead and figure out our phenotypes. Now again, we've got to be very careful here. I'm going to take a look at my genotypes and try to determine what phenotypes I could get given these genotypes. So this is where I start to use color. Now, this genotype right here is going to code for yellow round seeds. So I'm going to put a little check there, a little green check. That'll give me yellow round seeds. What about this genotype? Yeah, that's going to give me yellow round seeds also. What about this one? No. Nope. What about this one? Yep, yellow round seeds. What about this guy? Yep, yellow round seeds there too. Any others? I think that is it. All right, let's add those up. All right, so 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 2 more is 5, plus 4 more is 9. So 9 sixteenths are going to give me yellow round seeds. I'm going to use a different color here. Let's do this one next. We'll check. That's going to give me yellow wrinkled seeds. Any others with yellow wrinkled? Yeah, this guy right here. Any others? Nope. That's it. So 1 plus 2 is 3. And notice how I like to keep the denominators the same. That way I can add stuff up and compare things easily. So 3 sixteenths are going to be yellow wrinkled. Comma, comma. Maybe I'll use blue now. Ah, let's do this one. Here we go. So this is going to give me green round. Any other green round? Yeah, this guy right here. So 3 sixteenths going to give me green round seeds. Comma, comma. And then finally, yeah, I'll use orange for it. 1 sixteenth there we go, is going to give me green wrinkle. There we go. So just as a quick check, 9 plus 3 is 12, plus 3 is 15, plus 1 is 16. I don't want my numerators to be more or less than 16, or I made a mistake. Same thing here. You know, do a quick check, add up your numerator, it should equals 16. If it doesn't, you missed something. Go back and take a look. Now, finally, what do I want to do here, or almost finally, let's figure out phenotypic ratio. So phenotypic ratio. Again, this is a comparison. What I want to do is I want to take the lowest fraction, the smallest fraction, and divide it into all the others, including itself. So 1 16th goes into 9 sixteenths nine times. In a sense, you can just look at the numerator here. So 9 times, colon. 1 16th goes into 3 sixteenths three times. 1 16th goes into 3 sixteenths three times. 1 16th goes into itself once. So that's my phenotypic ratio. In fact, that's Mendel's famous phenotypic ratio, which indicates independent assortment. 9331, what does that mean? Well, it means that there's nine yellow round plant, there's nine plants that produce yellow round seeds for every three plants that produce yellow wrinkled seeds, for every three plants that produce green round seeds, for every one plant that produces green wrinkled seeds. Now finally, one more thing. What if I had a hundred plants? A hundred F2s. How many of those hundred would be expected to produce green wrinkled seeds? Well, it would be one sixteenth of that one hundred. So how could I figure that out? I've got one hundred seeds. I'll put that over one. And one sixteenth could be expected to produce green wrinkle. So I just, again, I multiply. That's going to give me 100 over 16. 
16 divided into 100, you do your math, and you'll come up, you round off, and you'll come up with approximately how many green wrinkled seed plants you should get. Same thing goes for genotype. What if I wanted to figure out, out of that 100, how many of those pea plants would be expected to be double heterozygous? Again, I started out with 100 pea plants, or I could have started out with 500. It doesn't matter. In this case, I'll give you 100. And out of that 100, how many could I expect to be double heterozygous? 4 sixteenths. 4 sixteenths in a sense, 4 sixteenths is what? 1 fourth? So what does that give me? 100 over 4 or 25 plants. I could expect 25 out of 100 plants to have this particular genotype. And that's going to be it for a double header, uh, for dihybrid cross.